then in today's video, I'm going to be showing you a Pink Panther design that I did on myself. And in this video, I'm using a dipping powder from Rossi Nails. I'm using it as acrylic, and I want to go over kind of some of my thoughts on Rossi's dipping powder versus double dip dipping powder. And from a, a um, I don't know, a nail tech standpoint, the way that Rossi has advertised kind of bugs me. They have done, and I, don't, I haven't seen it so much, but when they first came out, they did a lot of stuff like, you know, stop going to see your nail tech because you can just do this at home and it's just as good at home and you're gonna get a nail infection from going to your nail tech and all of this stuff that I think is just kind of in bad taste. And I know that, you know, somebody that's going to do dipping powder at home is gonna do it regardless of whether or not they had a nail tech and somebody that's used to going to a nail tech, that ad is not going to change their mind anyway. But it was just one of those things where I always just kind of rolled my eyes at it. It's like, why do you have to do that? Why do you have to slam a profession to sell your product? So that, but anyways, they reached out to me and they're like, do you want to try your stuff? I'm like, uh, fine, I guess, if you really, if you really want to. And so they sent me the teeniest, tiniest little jar of dipping powder where if you're going to actually dip your nail, it would fit, I don't think. And so I'm like, well, this isn't going to be dipped. I'm going to do this as acrylic. And as you can see in the video, it just does not apply very well. Now, Double Dip, on the other hand, has never done any of that underhanded advertising. And their products are just so much smoother and creamier and anything with glitter in it because this Rossi one does have glitter and sometimes you can't judge a product if glitter is in it because it never applies as well. But Double Dips does. And so it just in general, I wanted to get that off of my chest because there's just so many brands out there now that are marketing dipping powder for home use and some of them do things that I don't really love and some of them don't. The other benefit is Double Dip is US owned, operated, manufactured, whole thing, whereas Rossi does manufacture out of the country. Downfall with <laughs> Double Dip is that they don't ship out of the US right now. So there's, I mean, obviously benefits and downfalls of both, but those are two companies I've tried and I just wanted to kind of say my piece. So I hope that if you're you know, thinking of different companies, I hope maybe that'll help in some way. I do love this. Pink Panther design. It's one of the favorite things I've had on my nails recently. I just couldn't stop staring at them. So I hope you love that design as well and I'll see you next time. Bye! So on the middle finger, I'm going to dip a bead of clear acrylic into a white silver glitter mix. So this isn't the one from Rossi. This is just a loose glitter. And I'm going to be applying that over the whole nail. I absolutely love that glitter mix. It looks very wintry, very snowy and icy. Not that that's what this design's about, but you know, just the vibe it gives off if you ask me. And I'm going to be encapsulating that with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and strong. And it'll just protect that glitter from filing and all the nastiness of the world. Just go over that with the clear, smooth it out. And now after it's all filed and ready to go, I'm going to start painting my Pink Panther with a layer of pink gel polish. So I wanted the background to be that silver glitter because whenever I personally think of Pink Panther, I think crazy glitz and glam and just pink and silver everything. So that's what the theme for this nail was. So I've got his head and then his neck and then just the top of his shoulders. Don't forget his ears with that pink. And then once you're done painting all those details, cure it. And now with a lighter shade of pink that's almost white, I'm going to be painting his snout. It's just that very, you know, front area. It's like a soft triangle. And then after you have that part done, you're going to be painting the center of his chest that shows at least whatever, you know, you can show. And then the inside of his ears with that. And then we're going to be curing that again. And now with a darker pink that's more of a berry color, we're going to be painting his nose going down just like that. I absolutely love that pink color too. I'm all, you know, I love pink in general, which I'm sure nobody would ever guess. But now with some yellow, I'm going to be adding his other eye. So he's got one eye that's open and one eye that's closed, like he's winking. And now with a dark burgundy color, we're going to be doing all of our outlining. And I'm doing this and it is a gel polish. And I typically don't try to do outlines with gel polish. I'd rather do them with acrylic paint or gel paint because sometimes gel polish can spread a little bit. I, however, just had the perfect color for gel polish with this, so I decided to go with it anyway. If you're having that issue and, you're do paint, and you are painting something with gel polish and it's just spreading out and it's blending and it's smearing, it's causing you all these problems. If you have a flash cure flashlight next to you that you can just quickly click onto the nail to cure it every you know couple strokes and then put it down, even if you just set it, you know, cure it for two, three seconds, that can sometimes make all the difference. Otherwise, have your curing lamp next to you and every, you know, 10 seconds, put it in there for a couple seconds and pull it out and do a little bit more painting and pull it in, take it out. That makes a big difference if you are having that issue. This particular color is doing really well for outlines. So it's not an issue for me personally, but if you are 
you know, having that problem, that's always an option. So now with some black, this is gel paint though. With some black paint, I'm going to be doing all of my small details on Mr. Pink Panther, eyebrows, the pupil in his eye that's open, the lash line for his eye that's closed, and those long, wonderful whiskers. There's only two whiskers on each side, but then once you have those whiskers done, go ahead and cure that nail and now we can move on. So the next nail is going to be the thumb, index, and pinky, and we're going to be using Rossi Nails Tiara. So there's the color and it looks a lot pinker in the jar than it actually does going on. It's this pink hued dark gray is what I would say, or a medium gray. It's actually, it's a gorgeous color, but I don't know, can you guys tell that it's not applying as well as, I don't know, I expect it to, I suppose? And then I'm going to encapsulate this nail with a layer of clear acrylic to, to make sure it is nice and strong, just like the other one. And, you know, I do like that color. In fact, the color mix itself is absolutely gorgeous. No questions asked. I just, I just didn't fall in love with their products. It's just my personal opinion. If you love their products and they're working for you, then I have no problem with it. And I have, I would not tell somebody not to buy their products by no means. It's just, I personally think I have found better. So now with some black gel paint, I'm going to be writing pink across my thumbnail. And so I've got the N in the middle and then I'm going to write the P and my nail is just so nicely shaped for writing this. It's like it's, or did I say P, I meant K. Don't mind me, I can't spell. But it just seems like it's just perfectly, everything all fits in there so nicely. And then uh, in front of the N, I'm gonna write the I. So the great thing with doing a word and not doing the letters in order is that you can balance it out a little bit better. So I did the N just about the center of the nail because I know the I is a skinny one so that that gives you a nice, a nice way to balance it out so that you know that you'll have room for all of your letters and you can pretty much fill the nail without having you know to squish something in or have a gap here or there. And then for the dot for the eye, instead of just doing a dot, I'm going to use a little star, little star line. And then with some pink, this is the same pink that I did for the base of my Pink Panther. I'm going to go through and just add some very skinny, skinny, skinny little highlights on my letters. Not many, just a few, just to brighten it up. So now on the index with white gel paint, I'm going to be doing the outline of a diamond. So do you guys know what I mean by the outline of a diamond? Not just the, you know, geometry diamond shape, but this where you start out with kind of a squashed, you know, rectangle. And then you add the lines going down and around and then the little zigzag going back and forth. I used to doodle these all the time when I was younger and then finish off the bottom. And then on the pinky, I'm going to do a little paw print right on the tip of the nail. I think that's so cute. I love paw prints. I do wanna show off that background glitter color, so I'm not trying to overdo it with the art, but I did wanna add just a little bit of design onto every single nail. So that little paw print finishes off the pinky for now. And then for the ring finger, which is going to actually have my little uh, crystal ring on it, I'm going to do a first layer of just a cover pink, basically extending my flesh tone out so that the nail itself kind of disappears a little bit, bringing that up. And now after all those are filed in shape, we can begin adding the crystals basically all over this design. So I'm going to apply some jewelry gel to every place where I intend to put a crystal. So that's around the cuticle of my pinky and my index finger, and then almost the entire ring fingernail, and then on the dot of my eye on the thumb. So once you have all of those, then apply some gel top coat over all of them. These nails are all very shiny just to keep with that glitz you know, glitzy and glamorous uh, feeling and theme. I decided to keep them all very, very glossy. Normally I would probably do some that were matte, but just for this particular design, it felt, felt like glossy was the way to go. And now I'm going to be pressing my crystals into that jewelry gel. So I've got three just little crystals along the cuticle area on those nails and then some silver caviar beads around them. I'm not usually a person that wears caviar beads because I think that they kind of fall off and usually I don't know that they add that much to a design but for this particular one I felt that they were necessary and then my ring nail I'm going to press a very big pink Swarovski and I say very big but that's for my personal you know what I wear on my nails this has got to be the most you know bejewelment I've ever had on my nails myself so it was really quite the experience but I've got that big pink big pink Swarovski right in the middle and then I'm going to border it with the silver caviar beads going all the way around. So that's like the main center stone of this pink panther diamond that we're doing. And then after you have all those little pesky caviar beads going all the way around it, then you're going to take some more of those small silver Swarovskis and we're just going to go down the side. So I did three on each side, depending on the length of your nail or the width of your nail, these might have, you might do four or maybe you'd only do two on the sides. 
And then between all of those, add more of those little caviar beads. Just completely fill in this design with caviar beads. I do feel like they add a little bit more of an elegance to a design that has crystals having those little caviar beads in them. And so for this particular design, I felt like it was it was worth the hassle. So fill those in. If you're having issues with caviar beads because they, you know, you can't pick them up or they get stuck or something, one of the best ways because you don't have to worry about getting your, you know, they're not like a crystal where you don't want to get any gel on top of them. I saw one person where she mixed her caviar beads with some clear builder gel and then she applied them in more of like a brush with a brush instead. And that actually looked really well. In fact, if I had seen that technique before making this design, I probably would have given that a go. On the pinky, I'm going to do the same thing with the three on top, right? My cuticle and then the little caviar beads on the thumb. Here we go. Adding the one just over my, the dot in my eye on the word pink just to make that a little bit more sparkly and glamorous. After all those are cured, this is it. I, I can't even begin to tell you guys how much I love this design. I want it back on my nails so much. Might have to do it again. And so I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And here's a Melody Minutes. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. That little face she made at the end of that last video cracks me up so much. So you may have to go back and watch that if you didn't see it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.